What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of My Other Passion. I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief of Front Office Sports. And today we have an awesome guest, Kate Adams, who is the host of FanDuel show Up and Adams. You also probably know her from her many years of hosting Good Morning Football over at the NFL Network. We talked about media. We talked about travel. We talked about what she wants out of life and where she sees this business going. It is a longer conversation, but definitely one of the best ones we've had on this show so far. So I'm not going to keep you waiting. Let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to take a quick break to hear from our partners over at Oracle NetSuite, and then we'll be right back with Kat. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. First, you had the dot-com crash and the housing crash and whatever roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain, it's a dangerous time not to know your numbers, but over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you the visibility and control that you need over your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting. Everything that you need to manage risk, get reliable forecasts, improve margins, and the best thing about it, it's all in one place. So when you're trying to prepare for uncertain times, just remember, it's an easy answer, NetSuite. This is what's going to help you identify rising costs, automate business processes, and ultimately just see where to save money. 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgrade it to NetSuite. So what are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. All you got to do is head over to NetSuite.com slash MyOtherPassion. Go there right now, NetSuite.com slash MyOtherPassion. Take advantage of this offer and see what you can do for your business. So, Kay, what is up? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Love front office sports, and uh, this should be fun, Ernest. Yeah, uh, I think so, too. I know... We're both from Chicago. Sorry that I'm not wearing my White Sox hat today. My dog chewed it up, and that's not actually a fake excuse. Is that true? It really is true. I'm normally like, that's my signature, my Sox hat. But, you know, I moved to L.A. a couple years ago, uh, and I love the color blue. So, you know, I represent. I don't I don't mind wearing the Dodgers it's hat. It's such a good look. Like a Dodgers hat, no matter where you are, always it, like, looks clean. It looks great. But, uh but I don't know if I believe that. And the White Sox over the Cubs, I don't know if I like either. Well, well, tell us a little bit about that. You're from Chicago. I've seen you like yeah. talking about how much you love Justin Fields and the Bears. Like what? But you were in New York for a long time, but now you're in L.A. Like what is the state of the K. Adams sports fandom? Oh, man. You know, uh, the state of K. Adams sports fandom is still that I'm really attracted and always allured by the underdog. So I'm always interested in rooting for who's not getting rooted for enough. And I think that that happened when I got to Good Morning Football And then you sort of, you take this seat where you're like the mother hen and you're seeing, you know, from a vantage point, you're watching 32 teams, how they're covered nationally, how much love teams are getting. Uh, And, you know, there's teams that always just stick out like the Saints through the years or even the Chargers. Anybody talking about the Chargers in the AFC this year? No, but they're really in the playoff picture and in the mix and, and having comeback performances and wins and nobody's talking about those things. And those are the things that always I want to pound the table for those teams that aren't talked about. So is I that like why you right were now, repping? Well, I was going to say, like is that, that why you were repping for the, the Bengals? Seahawks. Yeah, that's the Bengals last year happened because we had a segment on Good Morning Football in which the guys were picking their division winners, and I think it was Steelers, Ravens, Ravens. And I said, why not the Steelers or why not the Bengals? And I drew, I put out the case because I just listened to what you know they say and sort of want to give a counter argument. Uh, and then Bengals fans came alive and said, why not us? You're right. It should be us. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that really got the conversation sort of going and I, nobody's rooting for them and not, not, and, and there's, it's just, it's like media, I think nationally, and I fall into this too. So I'm complaining about myself. It's like a late, it can be lazy and slow moving to change the narrative about any one person or any one team. So Gino Gino's sitting there looking like an MVP and people are still slow to the journey because like, no, 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 we've already written the story about Gino. We've moved on. That's what he is. Ryan Tannehill, same thing before he went to Tennessee. Like, no, 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 we've seen, we've seen the Miami Dolphins. We're done. So, and I, I really love people rewriting their story in other cities, other teams get, you know, I always root for Mitchell Trubisky, still rooting for him to sort of get that, that second vibe going for him. So uh, that's how the thing naturally sort of started with the Bengals. I'm just attracted to to the idea of teams not getting enough love when they're performing at a high level and how national media still likes to stick to 
the Patriots, the Steelers, the you know, like they stick to the cow, Boys. the Cowboys. Like I'm sorry, the cow. We're like, still we're still like obsessed with the Cowboys as a country, and it's we're going on three decades since they really like showed us anything, you know. Uh, but that just speaks to how strong these narratives are. And I and I actually love that you say that. It's a great observation. I think whether in sports or across media, we tend to fall into these patterns. But everyone loves the underdog. Everyone loves someone who can defy all the odds. That's why, you know, when an artist comes out of nowhere, all of a sudden they have the biggest song ever and no one expected it. Like, people yeah. love that so much um, because, you know, I, I love I, I don't want to get the beehive after me. You know, I I uh, love Beyonce, but at the same time, I want to see, okay, who are the people she inspired who are coming up, who are about to change the game? And I think sports is the same way. I'm not touching Beyonce. You're not getting me like that. <laughs> We're not going to get I'm the kidding. Kate Adams Beyonce headline out of this one. No, no I don't not, blame not, you. Not today. So what's up? So so you are in L.A. now? <sighs> yes. <laughs> I'm here. I moved here. You know what? I, I had a decision to make, right? So I hung it up with the Also, football. please just note, this is a safe space because I am a New okay. Yorker turned la or in the past two years. And me and my what wife are, are always in? like, should we move back? Do we miss the energy? Are we tired of the traffic? Like, so if you need to vent, this is the place yeah. to be. I don't know that I need to vent yet. And I, you know, the, New York's not like a walk in the park either a lot of the time. So sometimes like, you know, if you're having a good day in New York, there's no better place to be. If you're having a bad day in New York, it will, you will get hit with a puddle by a cab. You will miss your train. Mm -hmm. Somebody will spit on you like that. Like New York knows when you're having a bad day. Oh, yeah. So uh, I would say I could have stayed in New York. So I don't want to, I'm complaining too much. I should, I could have stayed in New York and, you know, wrote it out. FanDuel said, you can do a show wherever you want. You want to do a show from Jackson Hall, Wyoming? Go for it. And I said, oh, okay, <laughs> let me try something new for this first year of the show. And let's try to do it in Los Angeles. I've never lived here, but, you know, for an, an entire year before I've been in and out. Um, and it's just a, a little experiment I'm doing. Cause I hit like the 11 year mark in New York and was like, do I want to ride this out like the rest of my life? Am I going to be here or let's try something? And FanDuel was like really, really cool about I could have done it in Chicago. I could have done it whenever. And I think I can still move it if I feel like it. So they're super accommodating in that way. And I need to give them credit for that. Nice. So do you, do you like the city though? Are you enjoying it, you know, a few months into your time here? I haven't, you know, I really tried to put my head down and launch this show. And it's a lot to launch a show on any platform, any network, but especially one that has never been a sport, a football network before. Yeah. Uh, so it's very much a startup mentality. It doesn't have the infrastructure. So it's like a, you know, it's really a startup. It's really trying to put my head down. So I've just been working a ton and um, with this great team that I have that's working on my show specifically. Uh, so I haven't, I feel like I haven't lived that much and I mean, if you're going to like restaurants, name, name a great one. I can't find one. Like I can't find, I could, you know, you could, I could walk, I walk down the street in New York and find the best food in the world here. I'm struggling to find like great restaurants. You know what it is, Ernest? I can't, like, I'm not a planner in life. Yeah. Like anything that's happened to me career wise, personal wise is, is not been the result of planning or goal orienting. It just hasn't. So to me in LA, the entire mood is everything has to be planned to a T. Meet me Tuesday too. Like every, whereas in New York, I'm like, yo, I'm on the West Side Highway. Want to come down and get some yes. coffee? Get That's drinks. what I struggle with, Kay. That's yes, what I struggle I with because because I'm a traffic. spontaneous person by nature, and it's like when, when I'm making plans with friends, and I have to say, hey, next month. On the 18th, what are you doing at 6 p.m.? Where, whereas in New York, I would just be downtown. Like you said, holler at a friend. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm up on 24th. I'll pop down. And it's like, we don't have to make these elaborate plans. So it's a little bit different. But at the same time, I notice you are a traveler. And I think the beauty of it and, like, what we're fortunate enough to do in these yes. positions sometimes is just Bless. travel, see the world. You can... For the rest of your life, say, I lived in L.A., I lived in New York, I did this, I did that. I know, what, this summer you were in Greece, you're in Africa, you're all over Europe. Like, yes. what was that experience like for you? And, and beyond just the fun of travel, like, what did it teach you in terms of perspective, life, how you were able to come in and approach your show and business after getting some time to just see the world a bit? 
I think it it was a uh, like a, the second part of a huge shakeup from the pandemic. So I've always worked a lot. I don't even say hard, but a lot. I'm always work. I feel like I'm always working, and it's something that I'm comfortable in. That I swim in this space where I can compartmentalize and put my head down. And I don't really have a goal in mind. Like I'm not thinking like I want to be the best and I want this, to, like, I don't think about legacy. Like, I don't think, I mean, of course you think about those things, but they don't drive me necessarily. So it became this thing where I, I don't even know what I'm chasing. I just, I know that, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I've had some, some success. I've been lucky enough to be in good opportunities and good timing and, and have people that are helpful in, in leading a path for me or helping me. And, um, and, and, but, but what, what pandemic did is sort of took me out of this hamster wheel of like, what are you doing? Like, and I went to Chicago and I spent time with family and I slowed down and I didn't have to, didn't have to run to a studio and, and I worked full time the entire time. Um, but when, when that happened, that was like this first sort of level of, as an adult reevaluating, like, what are you doing? What's important to you? You're punting on your personal life because it's easier for you because you think you have control over your work life. And that's the truth. I always thought, put my head down, I grind, I'll get what I want because, or I'll, I'll be fine. I'll focus on this. I'm in charge of my career. And what a dumb, it's like the dumbest thing I've ever thought to thought because it's the, the least true thing that exists. You have a million people above you, working against you, working for mm-hmm. someone else, making decisions that don't include you. Um, people who don't value you, uh, and and that's just the truth. And I really was so naive to that. And you sort of realize, like, I can't control my personal life. If I'm in a relationship, and he, you know, it's fifty fifty. He could hurt me because I. But but you you can't. There's things you can't control, so you have to just sort of make decisions for what makes you happy. Um, and so that was a big part of it. So then, then in, in deciding to leave Good Morning Football, it was it was definitely part of that was like, I just want to see what else is out there. And if that means I'm not working for a year, and if that means nothing opens up or something's interesting, like I'm so blessed to have worked and been able to like, maybe I can just see what happens. Um, and I didn't want, you know, I did, I wanted to see what else was available. And, and uh, until then, it was a really beautiful opportunity and decision for me to say, like, I got to go travel. Because I've I've worked every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, just like anybody that does in this in this world, and we love yeah. and we're blessed to do it. And I never complain. It's just something you just get used to. So I, you know, of course, I wanted to see friends. I wanted to see family. I wanted to spend time with my parents who are getting older. So I did that. I was in Chicago a lot, um, and I went to Greece. I went to Africa. I went to Wimbledon. I was I was in Kenya. I was like with the gorillas in, in Rwanda. It was uh, incredibly inspiring, and I think it just told me. I, I taught, you know, one of the truth, I didn't miss working as much as I thought I would. Because that's what everyone would hit me up and be like, are you good? Like, how are you handling not being on TV every day? Like, it's your life. It's what you are. We never see, we never saw you while you were working. Now you're free. Like, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm good. Like, I'm okay. And that's, uh, that was a nice lesson to know that, that, uh, that I don't have to work that hard to feel fulfilled. Uh, or that much, I won't say hard again. It's not work that much, and uh, I don't know. I don't know that it, the summer necessarily changed me, but I knew in starting in like starting to delve back into work and projects and things I want to do that I want to be mindful of my space and in my personal life as well. Well, I need a trip like that. Maybe I could come to some of the same revelations. Where but... would you want to go? Where would you want to go? You go anywhere right now okay. for two weeks. Where are you going? Well, so I've been to London a lot of times, but it's one of those places that like I'll always be down to go back to. Um, I really I haven't been to Africa or Asia. I've been all over Europe, South America, America. I I want to see the Eastern Hemisphere and Africa a bit more. Um, there's so many places though. I mean, name I one say- place we can go for two weeks right now. You and me. That I've never been or that I've been? I, that wasn't the question, Ernest. Okay, well, right now, I mean, because it's just so boring, but really, I would go London? to London. I would go pop out to London for a minute just because, like, you know when you have when you're at a place with a city 
where you've been a bunch and you're starting to develop the relationship and you're like, that's how I was at New York at a point. I lived there for yeah. 10 years, just like you, but it was those early days of, oh, I've been, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. So yes, I really want to go to Budapest and I want to go to Copenhagen. I want to go to uh, Cape Town and all these, I've been to Copenhagen, but I want to go to all these like different places, but there's also cities that I want to build more of a relationship with, even though I've been to it several times. So I'll make London my answer, but London's if it was a, a place I if it was a place I'd never been, I'd say maybe like Tokyo or Seoul or something. Yeah, I don't. I've got I, that. Those aren't on my list. I don't know why. I, that that just seems it seems so far, and uh, I I need to get I need to I need to know more about like a Tokyo to make that trip or to plan that yeah. trip. I I don't know where I'd go right now. Probably Italy just to eat and chill and Italy's so beautiful and I think We have such a summer. we have such a great world at our disposal. Like sometimes you know, I'll I'll see this stuff and I'm like, okay, you know, Saturn is crazy. I love the ice rings and all that. But but like Earth is crazy. Like if we didn't live on <laughs> Earth, we would look at Earth and just be blown away how when we see that Jupiter is like this huge gaseous ball or whatever, it's like Earth is nuts. Like, uh, so I feel privileged to live here. You know, I want to see as much as as I can while we're while we're I feel all privileged here. to live on Earth. I love this. It, it's a it's a great place. We got it. We got a couple things we could do better, but you know, I'll take it. You, in fact, what you were talking about, like career wise, and and just sort of. Being in that, having that moment that you had this summer, sometimes I have to step back and do that and say, you know what? We are on like a spinning rock that is like flying throughout the universe. Like try to put it into right. perspective. And, you know, that, I don't think that means that we need to um, like underestimate the importance of things. Like sometimes people say, oh, we're just on this little rock, so nothing matters. I don't think that that's the case, but I do think that you have to put things into perspective sometimes and just try to be like appreciative. So we could talk about travel. In fact, I wish maybe I'll just start like a travel show and then we could just talk about. Now I've thought about it. Hours. I've thought about, it. I had a friend come on up and Adams today who for 10 years has been trying to get me to do a travel show with him. Yogi Roth, who good friend of mine repped by the same agency as mine, WME a guy who does elite 11 quarterback. He worked for Pete Carroll at USC. He wants to go. He would pick up right now and do a travel show. It's just so expensive. To, I've thought about it. Yeah. I've had conversations about it. It's so expensive to go do a travel show and to, to tape it and all of that. And like, there aren't very many buyers on it. That's the only thing. But in a post pandemic yeah. world, all I wanted to do was get out there and travel. And that was perspective right away with whatever you're, and something's taken away from you. That's the best reset of perspective available. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't doubt that if you want to make it happen, it'll happen down the line. But speaking of, you know, new shows, new opportunities. Can we talk about Up and Adams? Yeah. Uh, we've been doing it for a little bit now. FanDuel, like really take us into what that experience has been. So many people know you from Good Morning Football, right? Yeah. Um, you did that for six years. Now you have this new thing going on with FanDuel. And for people who haven't watched her or people who are watching and they're fans, but they want to understand more about, you know, what is actually happening to get this thing up and running. Uh, what, what has that experience been like for you so far? You know, I'm not, uh, it's not new in, in the way like the feelings that I have and like the, the, the workload or the adversity you face, the hurdles you face and building something is like my favorite part. Like I like, making a show. I did that with Good Morning Football, which is what most people know me from, right? That was not a show that existed. And then it was not a show that I don't think in the first two months we knew what it was. We didn't know. Yeah. I don't think, you know, until, until about the first year. And uh, you just have to pray and align yourself, which is what I did with people who give you the chance to be malleable, like to give you the chance to try stuff and not breathe down your neck. And in a way, you know, uh, and FanDuel has really been like that. And it kind of reminds me of Good Morning Football in that way. Obviously, like it's an N that was an NFL show. So that was a little, you're dealing with a little bit more there and a little bit more like bureaucracy, understandably. Of course. But also we were on, in New York. The rest of the, you know, NFL Network was in LA. We had a third person production company doing that show with different ideas, different, that was sort of filtering any sort. They wanted, they wanted it to be a different show. Um, and I learned a lot from that experience and like what it takes to build something, but it's so rewarding 
when you craft out any bit of audience. And now, you know, what? it's so funny. I was sitting here this morning thinking, like, what is the goal of this show? Is it to affect people? Is it to give good information? Yes. Is it to good, give good inter- entertainment? Yes. So I think those two things drive me. But it's so hard. This is not this is not a space like it was when I even started Good Morning Football. This is a space where you, there's so much out there. It is such a saturated market. So is my is a win for me to like cut through with a DK Metcalf poop story? Like I don't know. Is that rewarding? I don't. I don't even. I don't even know. Um, but I do just, you I know really at all it. though? Or are you are you getting like circling around in some capacity? Because, of course, I mean, even we just started doing this show back in July. Yeah. And I, I'm every day trying to figure out, okay, what it is, what's our goal. But, you know, a yeah. few months in, I'm starting to get a better idea. What What are you starting to sense is maybe where you think Up at Adams can go or what it should be in your heart? Yeah. The things that make – I mean, it's a different show every day. It's a bit – you know, everyone that – that I run into or it's a great interview, great interview show. And I'm like, is this an interview show? Like, I don't think it's an interview show, but obviously I don't want, I'm not like a pontificator. I don't like to, you know, when you're, when you're broached with the, the idea of getting your own show, which was an idea that I was in deep talks with an NFL network. Want your own show? What do you want to do? Okay. And then it's like, okay, I could do that. Or I could go do something that I have a little bit, probably a little bit more ownership of over at FanDuel because they're just launching something. They want content. They're supportive of whatever content you want to put out there. You know, and there's pluses to minuses with both. I don't know, like at this point, I love interviewing people. And it's something I didn't get to do as much on Good Morning Football because there's four people there and you're all interviewing one person. And then like on game day on that show on Sundays, I loved doing it because like I'd get to do a Patrick Mahomes one-on-one or a Tom Mm -hmm. Brady one-on-one. And I just personally got more out of that and it sort of just scratched an itch that I have because it's challenging with NFL players to get anything out of them and when I took a job with People Magazine it wasn't because I was like obsessed with the Kardashians no it's because like I saw an opportunity where I got to get uh, reps at interviewing a George Clooney a Jen Aniston a Jennifer Lopez you know and and on and on and on and those things are tough and it's tough to break through when there's 20 people interviewing one person, how are you going to separate yourself? Like that's a competitive thing I have where I want to win there. Like Super Bowl will be like that, you know, because everyone's doing the same five shows, same 10 shows. If I can get something out of Joe Montana that you can't get, like I won. Like that's, that's sort of where I get I, the, probably just the most competitive. But I think I want to show, you know, the thing, the things that have made me the most happy in doing it for the past 10 weeks. And it's such a baby. Like it's still, it's so such a baby. Um, I want to, what I really, I, what I really have liked doing is bringing maybe voices that don't get national platform, but do like 90 percent, 90 times the work of most people that have a national platform, myself included, giving them space. So we started the show, you know, I've read everyone at the athletic religiously. I've, you know, like, um, a Carmen Vitali who covers for Fox Sports the NFC North, or Jordan Rodriguez, or you know whoever it might be, um, Ruthie Polinsky. Uh, these beat writers that are in these locker rooms that are there day in day out. They don't. They're not really like a national TV show that like gives them a platform to go to come on and and show what the work that they do of course they write it and they are tweeting about it so i really felt like that's been really fun to put names like faces to those names and sort of uh get get that get, maybe just let them let them vibe like i think there should be a show and i'm interested in this and i want to produce it a show for beat writers like a national show like imagine a zoom call and it's you know, it's like a, a conference it was on television as a show. You want information? Are you a sports better? Are you into fantasy? Are you a nutty sports fan? Like, are you fervent? Sure, you're, you're going to want to watch. These, these people, they have the better information than anybody. To aggregate that as an information source would be like a roll call almost. Like, what do you got? What's going on with the Dolphins? Give me that Josh Allen UCL update. What do you, like, almost like a, I'm the nucleus or whoever the host would be like, that's a, that's a show I would want to produce and watch to give that platform. So that's been interesting. Just thinking of those ideas and like you get to, that's the coolest shit of having your own thing is that you get to pilot stuff all of the time. Like you get to see like, 
did that work? Did that flop? Did that not go well? Did that not, you know, what, you know, there's that. You definitely need that patience though. I I learn in these situations, you, you need a team around you and even with yourself to just say like, we, we do need to figure it out. Like everything is not going to be perfect day one. And that's not really like to give yourself a crutch to make mistakes, although they will happen. I think it's just understanding the reality of production, the reality of like dealing with audiences and understanding what works for yourself, what people like. Um, yeah. You know, I look back, this is going to be, you know, we're in 20 something range for the episodes here that Amazing. we're doing. Um. And it's so much different than episodes one, two, three back in July, you know? So things things evolve. I think, um, you know, the team over at FanDuel is cool, though. Amy, is CEO, is awesome. I've seen her speak out on a couple different panels at the Bloomberg Power Players yeah. Summit. I was and with then, her last night. She's the coolest. The coolest. Why, why is that? She is, in, you know, uh, why? Because I sat down with her when I met her. Didn't know much about her. And she said, I said, what is success for you on, for my, for my show? Like if I, if I do, if I do a show here, like what would be success for you? And she said, success for me is you, you feeling like you made the right move. And I was like, is that just like, who says that? What CEO? Right. Well, first of all, what CEO ta- sits there and talk, it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen. No, no the, the person who runs the bit, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So for her to even take the time was a badass B uh, she's she's winning. That makes her badass. She's the number one in the industry by a lot. If you look at any numbers or anything going on or projections uh, or just facts that are out there. Um, three, she's empowering. She wa- she wants me to be happy because she's because she sees the bigger picture of what they want to provide content and be seen as a media company. And if my show is successful, that only makes her successful. And so she's she. she I just think she, I, I really look up to her a lot. I think she's really cool. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a fan of her work too. And then I've I've gotten a chance to sit down with Mike Raffensperger a few times back during Super Bowl week. <laughs> we, uh, we linked up. And then I was just in New York uh, for an FOS event that he did some speaking at. And yeah, great guy. Very He's a unique. ham. He likes, he likes being in front of those cameras. Well, you know what I like about it though? He... Uh, he doesn't just say like stock stuff. Like he, he really kind of says stuff that you're not necessarily supposed to say or whatever. Like that's what makes him good for the camera. Cause I think even, you know, we had um, rising 25 at FOS and we're yeah. congratulating all the people in the industry or up and coming. And they're asking him questions at this little leadership summit that we did. And he's not giving them like the easy answers, you know, that he, he's oh. really, he, you know, he's a guy who's, um, I think has some like unconventional thoughts that have probably helped him in his career and, you know, is not afraid to share them, but yeah, good. Team. I bother, good, him. Good I bother him literally every day. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to Mar- marketing is half of what's going to make your show work or not. I do. I bother him quite and he's, and he's very patient much more than I, but you know, I, cause I want, I want my show to do well. I mean, and yeah, I you need all the levers well, so. pulled the right way. Yeah, I do. I've seen you talk about um, because also someone having like a FanDuel relationship with their show, Pat McAfee, mm-hmm. um, and you have a relationship with him. Like you all talk about your work, like and plus everyone just like loves him and loves his show now. Like what? Uh, what's up? You got any Pat stories? Oh my gosh, I don't have Pat stories. Uh, I'm just blown, just blown away by the success and by the the le- like the leverage he has like it is uncanny it is aspirational uh and it is self-made so it is a beautiful thing and if, so of course i i just sort of watch what he does i don't want to be just like him but i do think he's so disruptive he is such a chip on his shoulder i almost wish it drives him but i almost wish i could see it like relieved a little bit um but he's thriving. He's happy. I think the thing that sticks out to me about him is that he really, truly is grateful, truly is grateful for everything he has, his opportunities. He's worked his ass for it. He's, I mean, he's had doors slammed in his face. So he'll, everybody will hear about that and know about that. Um, but he is true to himself, but he's mostly like leads with gratitude, which I think is uh, the epitome of success. But he's out there showing you like what can be done. He'll, you know, he's the first, will he be the last to have that sort of a platform, that sort of swing. 
Um, but you know, when he when he does what he did with the NFL the other week, I'm paying attention to that because I want to see like, is the NFL going to bend the knee to Pat McAfee? Does the NFL going to care what he says? Is it... But it's interesting because he's built himself to such a place where he does not need anyone, and that is, my friend, the dream. Yep, that's what we're all trying to do. What are you? Yeah. What are you at front office sports? Like, is it just? I mean, he's changed the game. Yeah, I mean, one from a coverage standpoint, what's what's great about him is just us covering his moves, whether it's a new deal that he signs or he's going to be on game day or whatever. Like, he'll support us for one. So, shout out Pat, we appreciate that. Um, you know, amplify ours or use the posts that we made to help tell the story about you know whatever his announcement is. But also, he just has like fans. Like, he's like a legitimate celebrity now. Like, yeah we say something about a move that he's making and whether he engages or not, people are tuned in. So um, there's that aspect. It's it's how, it's how he is. Like he, I was talking to anybody that I talked to and I don't know, I don't know McAfee like personally, um, but I can just tell you just in any interaction we've ever had, he is, he wants everyone to win. And I think he means it. And that's also not common um, for the, the person to be on top to, like he he's supportive like he is support he would be happy if i won you know career wise like he want he yeah. really wants that for everybody i don't think he wishes you know i don't know i can't say speak for him but like it's it's very uh it's not bullshit like it's real um and then like you talk to people from back when he was you know just starting and doing radio hits as a guest and he just had this charisma and some people just have that where they would try to do live audiences. 10 people showed up next week, 50 people showed up and then seats would sell out. And it's all to see Pat. He just has that it factor. And it's really yeah. cool. So, and sometimes that's just it. And, you know, he will, he'll, uh, he'll read some of our posts or whatever on air. If we break a story <laughs> or he's made fun of us about stuff yeah. or whatever, but just to have that type of like authentic back and forth and, you know, whatever side of the spectrum it falls on. I think from a coverage standpoint to the fact that I think, you know, we create things that are relevant for him and he does the same for us. Um, So it's the type of thing where like, you want to cover what's going on with him. You see what he's doing with his model and, you know, we're doing a show here. We're doing other things where we're like, wow, look at how Pat is doing it over there. Right. And then just also just being in the space, supporting each other. Like if we break something, he shows us love or vice versa, that's uh, that's really, that's really, you know, I think the best that you can ask for in a situation. Like Does that. it change? But, I mean, but, yeah, but if it, if something went wrong, you would report it objectively, right? And that's oh, just, of course. That's so I mean, that's yeah. that's one thing that I think like keeps FOS on the trajectory that we're on. Uh, we have a, we have a lot of friends, we have a lot of great relationships, but at the end of the day, we have integrity. Um, yeah. You know, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to objectively report what needs to be reported, whether that makes everyone happy or not. Um, One thing I will say is that we're not like out to get anyone, which is one thing that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I've always thought was like needed in media. I mean, look, you, you see some of our reporters, they're on the commander story. They're on the Brett Favre story. Like no problem with that because that's something that we have and we're going to chase it. But, you know, we are we are just about telling people things that matter to them. Like, we want you to open yeah. the newsletter in the morning and feel like your day is off to a better start. You know, um, that's that's what. So sometimes that's going to be some scandal. But a lot of times we just want to, like, inspire people, you know, like I'm on this show right. with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, I. I. I would love to to get all the juice about why did the NFL network negotiations fall apart and why aren't you there and what happened at Amazon and please. You, you know, can if ask you have, me. If, well, I'm going to. And if you have anything <laughs> on your chest, get it off. But at the same time, no, I'm no, like, no. I'm like, yo, we just, so uh, we also just want to talk to Kay because she's like an inspiring figure right now. And, and we think people Thanks. will enjoy it. It's like people, I think people forget that like multiple things can be true sometimes. It's like cool. you can, you can do it all. You can be about chasing down the the latest scandal and also want to just like have fun and make a meme, which our great like social team does all the time. You can do all of the above. 
Well, it sounds like you love your job, so you don't need to be inspired by anybody because that's that's you're winning already. No, nah, you always inspiration never stops. But since since we broached the t- the, the subject, <laughs> oh God, what uh, do you why, know? Don't, why don't we talk about NFL <laughs> Network and Amazon yeah. a little bit? Just because I, I, everything you've put out there, it seems like you really still want it to, you know keep a relationship with uh relationship yeah. with NFL network and like you you know, hope you all can work together again in the future. Like what was the breakdown there? I, the way it looks, it's just like, damn, they weren't going to give you enough money. Is that, is that just what it came down to? No, definitely not. Um, I knew probably in 2020, I would say like a year before my contract ran up, my contract actually had a run up. And okay, so okay, and, can I just say real quick, I've yeah. I've seen this part of like I've seen this story about how you knew you wanted to try something different, you weren't leaving for anything. Like I've seen those pieces throughout the yeah. media, but I guess I'm trying to get to the layer beyond that of like, well, where do you stand now though? You know, what what would it take to to bring that to uh you know, a place where well, you yeah, all so, can work so, together again? So I came back and I did a one year like a one year option. And it was, let's do this for one more year, knowing that that's going to be it for that year. So then, of course, the conversation turns to, while I'm still on Good Morning Football, uh, both sides are like, well, what, what does a deal look like in the future? What does a deal look like that takes me off of Good Morning Football? What else is available? And then you look at it and you see that the, you know, the primetime game, the Thursday night games, leaving NFL Network. And then you say, okay, well, what is like, you know, because you like, Good Morning Football is a great seat. That's a great seat there. Mm-hmm. Three hours live, three hour repeat in the building of all those, you know, those important places. So what's cooler than that, right? And what's cooler than that is like that, that Sunday gig, right? The game day. Oh. What can I do on game day? Um, but Rich Eisen is a staple. He's an icon, a legend. Is Rich Eisen going anywhere? No. So, okay, so I can't, you know, am I going to inherit that seat at some point? What would that look like? What would, you know, what, what are you, what are you signing up for? What does a deal look like? Oh, let's talk about giving you, you know, a, your own show, a podcast, all that. So you go through these, you know, months and months of, of going back and forth on what might look right and what might look um, appetizing. And at the, and, and then you start talking to other people and yeah, Amazon included and also FanDuel, FanDuel, who I've been talking to for about, you know, a year on and off. And knowing that they want to put content together, knowing they want to be supportive, knowing they want to give you give you space, um, and knowing that FanDuel is like go go do whatever you want in terms of anything else. You don't have to you know go be go go do a show for Apple. Go do a show. Go do whatever you want, or don't or don't do whatever you want. Whereas you know any anything with NFL is a little different. So it came down to, I didn't want to, literally for the longest time, Ernest, I didn't want to make a decision. That's the truth. Because I didn't, I didn't think it was fair that I had to make a decision between NFL Network, which I, obviously I wouldn't do anything every day. It would be game days and events going, you know, then traveling internationally, doing whatever, interviews, whatever. Uh, that I want to do that and FanDuel. That has been my goal for about a year now. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it can't happen, or it has, it, I think it will happen, but it has not happened as of now because there are some issues be, uh, between NFL and sports betting companies as far as talent are concerned. Well, kind of, of course, but as you can see, you can turn on any network at any game, pregame, postgame, midgame crawl under the screen and sports betting is discussed. Now my show up and Adams is not about sports betting. Mm -hmm. My show is a content show. So there's a lot, there's just a lot of ticky tacky things that are being resolved and talked about and goalposts, you know, move on both sides, but I want to do both. I want to, I want to maintain where I stand with the national football league, which is I love bearing the responsibility of, of the integrity of the league. I love NFL media. I've had a really great experience for six years I want to try something new. I want a bigger opportunity. Doesn't didn't exist in a way that I would pick it over my opportunity at FanDuel at this time. But I'm constantly earnest, constantly trying to work to make both of them work because you know every the, the point is everybody needs to be treated by the same set of rules. I'm struggling to see how that's the case, 
And I'm working really hard to get back to, and to, to NFL media, which I love. But for, you know, I took FanDuel because they presented me an undeniable opportunity, uh, which I'm happy with my decision about. But that doesn't yeah. mean I don't miss. That doesn't mean I don't want to be part of NFL media. That doesn't mean that I'm not constantly barking and trying to work out the wrinkles that exist and then re-wrinkle and then there's new wrinkles and then there's this and that. But nothing ended poorly. Nothing ended badly. But even, you know, I'm, you know, at this at this point where we stand, NFL media guests, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I can have them on my show. I can't go on Good Morning Football. It's just where it stands and it's totally understandable and it's a very sensitive thing and I have respect on both sides. Um, but, uh, but FanDuel would of course be okay if I worked with NFL media. We just have to, we have to, we have to get to a good place. And I'm, I'm really op- uh, optimistic about it. Yeah. Good, good luck working it out. It's such a, it's such like a nascent space right now. And that's why I was like, oh, of course, NFL sports betting. But then you look and there's how many examples where those lines are blurred, where, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you're like, well, can we figure something out for my situation? So, well, my situation is that I, you know, I I don't, I at first thought it was more people. And I think everyone was like, Kay's going to work, do a show, like a show on fan. Everyone thinks like you're doing like, sports betting like i'm spitting out like picks and lines i know i've never right that's just not who i that's not what i'm doing so then so that you know and i also you know like those these two worlds this is why you know fanduel is interesting too because these two worlds are not they're coming together nfl and sports you you see it everywhere you look so to be that i would love because you know i like being on the forefront i like building things i think i'm a great person to bridge that gap yeah. between the two to make it all work in concert in some way because it's going to anyway all right show how it can be done responsibly yeah. perhaps yeah there's i mean yeah. you know naturally there's a lot of a lot of questions uh i mean of course given that you work for fanduel i don't know if you have anything too critical to say but you know i i do wonder just do you think that this is all moving in the right direction like sports betting went from no man's land to all of a sudden just basically integrated with you know all of sports all of american sports all over tv advertising and yeah you know do you think do you think the right decisions are being made um and like you know everyone's doing what they can to just preserve the integrity um because i i which, which is super I, respectful for sure yeah, i, I, I have so many friends so- who like bet and they love betting and i have just as many who are like i am sick of what this is doing i can't even turn on a game without seeing all this stuff so like you know, what do you think? I mean, I think it's a, it's like a not don't waste time thinking about it. It's happened. Yeah. And it was always a part of the game. And now it's now there's an opportunity to have restraint on it, to have responsible gaming implemented, to have education implemented in it. And to, you know, people who are curious about it, like like me, like I had I really had I'd never had. I was so naive to sports betting. I can't even tell you like beyond like, like an idiot. But, but I'm not it's, a better. It's a, but it's part of it, which is, which is fine. So don't be a better, but maybe some people want or are curious about it. There's a lot of money rolling in that can be used for good things. Uh, and it's not like it wouldn't be part of our game. So to do it and be on the right side of it, I think is meaningful and important. How do you think Amazon's doing? Their viewership has been like kind of up and down. Um, you know, we had a post that actually went viral because it was like first week, 13 something million. And then it was just kind of like sh- down That's to not the That's fair though, because that, that game was so crazy. <laughs> okay, but by week seven or whatever, you have like 7 million people watching. I almost want to pull up the exact, um, exact chart that we had, but. I just wonder, as a consumer, how do you feel about their coverage? Do you watch it? And do you say, well, that's why I should have been on there. Okay, no wonder the views keep on sinking. Like, why, do, no, why, just... do you think, why do you think I'm not on there? Well, probably, realistically, you all just couldn't come to terms or, you know, things didn't work out. But but I but I mean, well, maybe it was your choice. But I mean, like, do you watch it and then just one, like, what do you think of the coverage? And then do you say, well, that's you all should have met me where I needed you to meet me because yeah. I would have done X, Y and Z to make this a better broadcast. 
I think you could, I can look at it objectively at the same way I look at the show I'm on right now and the same way I look at Good Morning Football the first year. Like, don't even pull up clips from the first year of Good Morning Football with me. It is an entirely different thing. It's no different than the podcast you're doing. So no. to judge anything in the first season, I think, is crazy. The undertaking of and just the responsibility and the coolness of being. That's why I wanted to be a part of it. It's because you're the first streamer. You are the first. You are yeah. the first to do it. It's get, you know, I, I, I don't even have a list of like, I just, that's the really the way I look at it. Like you can't judge things. I don't like people, you know, you guys have a job to do, but I don't appreciate the, and I know it's Nielsen rating, so it exists, but the, um, the picking a part of something that doesn't quite know what it is yet. And I'm sure they're changing things all of the time. Um, and it can't be easy. And like the undertaking of like taking a, like the coolness of taking a show on the road. Like, are you kidding? They're in those, they're in those stadiums, like the unpredictability, the energy of it all and trying to capture that, um, is incredible. And, you know, I think that there's, uh, you know, I mean, Richard Sherman's incredible. I've tried to get him on my show. Um, uh, Andrew Whitworth has come on my show. I think it's it's fun with their, you know, like they're just they're trying to. Taylor Rooks is an absolute star, of course. Love seeing her do stuff for the NFL. Um, Carissa Bonafide, like absolute stud, does it on Sundays and now gets to do it in stadiums. It's great. It's a great product, and it's gonna. Yeah. I'm sure it'll change as it as it goes. Yeah. Well, and they're, the ratings, they're locked in for are, a decade too, so they have a lot I mean, of time to figure it out. So when you're looking at it, like is front off like. Is front office sports saying, trying to say something about the like the the games that are given, or what is the um, indictment you know, we, on we, the rating? It or wasn't it, even an indictment. Like, we just Ryan we just Pitt, presented Ryan, yeah. we just presented the fact that the viewership has been kind of up and down and trending downward, um, and then people ran with it and said what they had to say from there. What's wasn't the biggest? Any, what's the biggest thing that you saw on Twitter? Like, what's the biggest fault? Like, is it is it because the games have been yeah, Not I think really. part of it, like, you, you, you have some people who have an agenda and they say, oh, this is why I never wanted Amazon to, you know, get an NFL rights. Or you have some people who are just like, yeah, these games have been kind of whack. Of course, no one's trying to watch, you know, whatever yeah. matchup this okay. week. So so it's just it's just varied. But as someone who was so close to the situation, I was, that's why I was asking you. Because I've seen it, opinions yeah. all over the place. I'm like, well, shit, K was almost on yeah. here and, and is also incredibly experienced in this field so like what is her take i think there were a lot of people who were almost that's kind of you know my experience with them and i mean they i wanted that job like i i got ahead of it i worked for amazon yeah. for a couple of seasons before i worked with chris long and andrew hawkins daniel jeremiah leading up to that very much like circling like this is and i made it known and and i really i wanted i love being in stadiums oh my god the energy, like I would feed off of that and that it would have been awesome. It didn't work out. Um, and I, of course, wish them the best. And, and uh, uh, I, I'm sure, I, I mean, I think it's a great part. They're doing stuff that's never, that's never been done. So you can't criticize that. That should be rewarded. They're taking risks. I, I, I happen to find there's a lot of people in our industry who don't take risks, right? Like, me saying I don't want to redo a deal at Good Morning Football, like I kind of like that about myself. Like that's that's I could be safe and comfy and whatever. And like let's just go take a risk. Let's go see what happens. And that's there's a lot of blessings and in, um, involved in that, of course. But but I, I give I give it up to them for trying to do something new. It's actually awesome that you say that because that is uh, that's a question that I have down here. I'm gonna. You know, we know as interviewers on shows, you want to say it and be conversational, but I'll put it down the square way that I just have it written down. What okay. have you learned about life and business and taking risk? <laughs> but I, I say that just because you uh, you bring up risk and I have been looking at, you know, your moves, your interviews, um, and it seemed like risk taking is like high on the on the chart for you in terms of just like things that you value in life and business and you just took a big risk this year you know you're yeah. even looking at like a third party situation and admiring them for how they're taking risk and i think probably a lot of the stuff like you said uh, my career didn't happen because i planned for so much of it uh, i'm right. sure a lot of it was opportunity take a risk give it a chance and 
like I said, a lot of people are going to be listening to this who are curious about like your journey. And you have so many different things that people continue to say, right? Embrace failure, you know, be humble. Like there's just certain things that we know are yeah. a part of life and making it. But let's talk about risk and like what you have learned about that in your career and maybe like what other people could stand to learn. I think it's just, man, I don't, I don't find it that hard to take risks because I, maybe it's like imposter syndrome or something. Like I never, I never look at myself as like the, you know, like, like Amazon's a good example. Like I just wanted it, but I, but I never truly felt like they really wanted me. And so I, you know, so even when that, that, when that, when talks fell apart and we weren't able to come to terms, it was, I didn't have like a, I'm trying to think of the feeling I had, what, what I was. You weren't like disappointed or, or crushed? No, I was or... very, oh, <laughs> no. I was really upset, really okay. disappointed. Um, but it wasn't like it should have been mine. I should, like, okay. I, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. And I think when you, when you have, when you don't have high, high, I didn't expect to get it. And I didn't, but then I did, then I got an offer and it was like, great. And then, you know, but you, I, I don't know. I always like, I always uh, protect myself from anything. So it, it's not when it's even when you, you, you know, when you take a risk, I didn't really, I didn't take a risk in leaving good morning football. And I, so I don't want it to, I don't want to be seen as some like risk taker because I just knew I didn't, I was, I knew, here's how I truly felt about that decision. Cause that's a decision, right? That's seen as like, man, she left this great, and it's a great job. And Jamie is killing it. And I love okay. Jamie and I'm so happy for her. Um, I was, I just felt like I did really good work there. And I felt and feel that my work there was just done. Like I felt good about it. Walk off Emmy. Great. Worked with Nate, worked with so many other, you know, other personalities that came through the door, unforgettable experiences. But my work was just done there. So it almost doesn't matter what's next. It's just that I knew that that was done. Now, the decision of what you're going to do next, I'm, ter I'm awful at. So if you have advice for me, I have, I'm not going to sit here and give advice. I'm terrible at making decisions. You know, like this, this NFL network versus FanDuel thing ate me up all summer. So while I was in Africa, I'm not kidding. I'm making pros and cons lists. I'm trying to figure out like, and I'm angry the whole time because both should be able to exist together. Right? right. And so, and that's what, that's what my ultimate is, but there's, there's reasons it can't happen and it might not ever happen. And, and that is what it is, but I wouldn't say, cause I wouldn't say, you know, like what's the real risk that I took that I would do nothing that I would get a job or do a job with NFL media. That's not good morning football and be less relevant. Am I going to get less likes? Am I going to like, what, what is, I mean, those it are, it those are risks. What your goal is. Do you, kind of, do but, you <laughs> but do you I get into that myself. though? What do you, do mean? you get it? Do you get into that? Like, okay. So you're a public figure at this point, you know, you're kind of famous. Like you, you give yourself some credit, right? I know like well, people know you, right? People know you, yeah. they like you. Do you get into this almost like judgment of yourself or this situation where you feel like, Oh, you know, they don't like me as much this week, or I have to do this to stay on top, or I have to, like, like how do you, because for instance, Tom Brady, right, or yeah. any great athlete has to, week to week, season to season, kind of always be on top of themselves. We just, we were talking about other parts of entertainment that happens in music. You had a hot song yeah. last year, now it's like, hey, where's the next hit, Drake? We love you. He, I mean, he's so great because he's, for 10 years now, been giving yeah. us hits but do you find yourself in a position where you're ever like yo i gotta do this or i'm gonna be washed up or i have to like do you just get critical like that or are you more so a person who just like is having fun and you're riding with it and you don't get caught up in all that and well, either one's fine like, but i you just have an interesting perspective i wonder like how you i don't know i never look at look myself at as well like i left good morning football and i was off of social media for like five months and did you know and then and then like you saw stuff from africa like way after i was in yeah. africa because i just I, need, I i wanted a break i don't feel like i need it i don't feel the need to like stay in the mix 
Um, I very much consider it work. Uh, I like being, I like being anonymous. I li- I'm introverted at heart. So there's not like a need of like, well, I want to do this, but I think it all goes back to like, what is the goal? Is my goal to, you know, I would say I had, I, I had a goal of what I want the big boy table, right. Which, was, which I think is what I called it to Mac. I want to, I want to lead a pregame show. I want the eyeballs. I want, I want that. But like, I, I don't know, like timing opportunity. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Right. So then you have to sort of, I don't know, like I never have high expectations for anything when it comes to this industry. I just have, you know, my goal right now is to launch this show, to have it be successful for the team that's putting it together, to get put out good content that I feel good about. And I think it's, you know, also like, you know, there's, there's part of it. I never like harp on being a woman in school. Sports, it's not something that I ever center on, but like the fact is like women led shows in sports, the success rate is not great. So to, to, to be that, to cut through, to be a platform where people, you know, come and, and, and support that is uh, meaningful to me for sure. So what, but I'm not is, like, I need to stay relevant. Let me get, you know, let me that's get a, this. That's exactly what I, I meant. Because I, I, just because, like, you know, you never I know. Mean, yes and I think no. you have to, you have to be, you have to resonate. You have to engage. You have to, but I don't feel like more or less pressure than I did. You know, I never like saw Good Morning Football as some like, we made it like we're right. famous like i never saw it that way <laughs> yeah yeah and of course but there's it, so many other heights to to reach but i think it's yeah. interesting someone yeah. like you yeah. who who is kind of like at that precipice where a lot of people know you and love you and you have followers and stuff but you're not like mm-hmm. the most famous household name in the world but it's like okay so how do you how do you navigate that from there because i think i think some people in your position might approach it the way that you do, which I think has its own merits. And I think that there's some people who every time somebody gets a job, they're going to be, they're going to be jealous and they're going to, well, well, how do I do this to counter that? And what it, like, we all move differently. I don't even necessarily think one is right or wrong, but I do think yeah. that a lot of people like admire the work you do. And it's interesting to hear like how you think about the business. I mostly am not like in, and this is not, you know, I, I read front office sports, obviously. I mostly am not in the sauce as much as maybe other people are, but please believe there are people in this industry that I, that do motivate me to shut them up for sure. You know, like for who? sure. I mean, I'm not, I don't need to say that. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> Petty Murphy over here. Um, but they're, but, I just, but you know, I never, I'm giving you the platform if you want to, if no, you want to, no, you know, let, let the chopper no, sing. Is, no, there, but there definitely is, is that, but mostly like other people's success, but I will say this and it's not other people's success doesn't take away from anything. Like everybody winning is good. McAfee winning in a big way is only good for everybody. Um, and, but yeah, I, I, that's really, that's, that's definitely true. That's what I, what I see. I don't see people as much. There's too much media now to, to see that much competition and the chair, you know, like you just kind of have to come to terms with the fact that like, you might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it has nothing to do with the other person being better than you. It's just what some relationship or some, you know, um, whatever, like what people, what the people's decisions or preferences or, or whatever it is. Right. Um, yeah. Finding your space. Well, you said, yeah, so like, we've talked so much about this business and, you know, you talked about travel, mm-hmm. you know, we're looking out for the K Adams travel show one day, but like, <laughs> you know, you seem so like hyper-focused on this. What, what else are you like a music person? Are you like trying yeah. to do some, act? you trying to do some acting on the side? Like, like yeah. when you're not thinking about, and, you know, I, I, mean, I could see you popping up on somebody's sitcom or something, but yeah, like what, what, when you're not thinking about. What do about I look like, sport- Nate Burleson to you? Are you crazy? That's Nate. I'm waiting for the Burleson's show to, to pop off because I'm sure it will uh, at some point. No, I have no interest in that. I did like a, I did like a Smirnoff commercial with, um, 
with Vernon Davis, who's like taking acting classes. Yeah. Well, like you know, he was morning. on this. He was on one of oh, our okay. earlier episodes and he He's told us all about his transition into acting Love and him. stuff. It was awesome. Yeah. So I'm with him and like I'm reading these lines and they're like, you're announcing them. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, just say them like you normally say them. I go, no, I am. And they're like, you know, so, so I hard. No, it's so hard. And then it's like all day. And I'm, I'm a live girl. Like Acting is not, so much harder than because you know about that inflection and, and just how to like sound. No, I don't. I don't you, know I've anything. Seen, like, I've you seen think you I know, on TV. I don't know anything. I've seen I've you on TV, that. though. You know how All to right. speak on TV. Acting uh-huh. is like, yeah. it's crazy because it's like you said, it's like normal, but yet you're trying <laughs> so hard, but yet you have to seem like you're not trying at all because it's natural. Ernest, it's just like, I've done some acting on TV, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I've done some acting. It's you. Everybody does. I'm. You, you don't know what's going on. You got to pretend you know what's going on. You're half listening to this. You're half like. Right. So there's a lot of acting involved in things for sure. Um, but no, I have no. I'm. I like being live. Like we were talking about, like finding yourself and you know throwing things at the wall, and they're not gonna like the best thing ever is a live show. You do a live show. If it sucks, if a show sucks, you get in this boardroom I'm in right now. You talk about it for like 10, 15 minutes, and then it's, oh, we have a show in 24 hours. And I love that because then it's a rebound rate. It's quick. It's let's throw something else at the wall and keep going. So, and the thought of like really anything pre recorded is not my favorite. It's not. I like live. I like the bullets. I get a little high off of it. I won't lie. And I like rather than recording something. Like if I did a podcast ever, I'd want it to be a live podcast. Like I'd want it to just go out live. Let's say I like that perspective. Yeah, so no no acting. Uh, so music, then what course, about, yeah, like what is, what do you basically do with your life when you're not working or like, you know, the traveling? Like what what are the things that you just like like to do? Like what makes Kay Adams who she is outside of social media and, and TV? I think traveling, family, um, hanging out with my boyfriend a lot. And he's in Los Angeles, which is amazing. And, uh, and exploring and we were in New York last week for the shows and, you know, I went to Broadway on Monday night, we had a Knicks game on the docket, we went to um, the Basquiat um, exhibit, we went to the Whitney Museum, um, I love eating at great restaurants, I love seeing shows uh, and concerts and all of that, so just, uh, just sort of living is... is uh, is what I like to do. I like to hike, which is one beautiful part of LA. I haven't gotten to do that enough. Um, but that's sort of like my, my, you know, my safe space. Like I would leave, you know, I'll leave a show, take this clown makeup off and put these headphones in and just not talk to anyone all day and be super happy. Like I'm pretty introverted. Like I, who's I'm on the like playlist. That. Who's on the playlist right now? Oh my God. Everyone is on the playlist right now. I can't even, I really can't even, I've been listening to some like old, like, um, like older music. I don't want to share. Let's see what's on the playlist. No, I'm, I'm like a huge music nerd and I listen to really? literally everything. Yeah. I listen to everything for real. So what are you, there's listening, nothing... what are you listening to? Um, I'm always in sort of like a eighties post-punk like new order to Pesh mode. Type new order to Pesh mode. What? Yeah. Um, oh, what am I doing? I'm like Let's really see. big. I'm always on that type of stuff. Um, you know, I I can get into like a pop phase too. Like I was running up. In fact, I I, I don't mean because like social media is like fake. So I don't mean like oh I went viral. I'm so cool. But I did have a TikTok go viral. You remember Ryan Cabrera on the way down? Oh uh, yeah. Still- Obvious. Okay. So <laughs> I saw you. Yeah. you Save me but from myself. myself. Yeah. And I won't forget the way you love. So I had a little TikTok where I was like, "Yo, can we just like give Ryan Cabrera some props for how he slid on this song?" And it got like half a million views. Like Is that true? so. Yeah, so like, so I'm I either I I kind of on everything. Like, I will go from Tupac to Ryan Cabrera to Joy Division yeah. <laughs> to Janet Jackson. Like, I just Joy Division is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have I literally have everything. I have Noah Cyrus on here randomly. I have My Chemical Romance is what I was listening course. to. Randomly. That tour, their their well, reunion they, tours, right? So I was my friend was going and it got canceled or whatever. That was yeah. insane. And then I have the best of Motown. Like that's the blast. That's, <laughs> that's 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 the way to listen to music in my opinion. It's like I've I've even said I probably have said it on the show before. It's like to me, there's two types of music. There's good music and there's bad music. And I even like bad music sometimes because it's at least challenging me. You know, it's it's yeah. 
So, so I feel, you know, um, I'm a big I, podcast person though. Like I'd pick like right now, like, you know, cause I got to stay in the Like I, I, 32 teams is, is a bunch. So mm-hmm. I'm a big, if I have time, if I'm listening to music, like I'm on top of my shit because otherwise I'm not listening to music. I'm listening to every podcast or local. I like, I like dipping into like the local radio stations to see what they're right. talking about. Cause that's where you get the, I think the best information. Totally. Um, so I'm, if I'm in the car, if I'm, at, I'm definitely listening to podcasts. All that's why you're not just persuaded by the, the mainstream perspective or whatever, because mm-hmm. you got to get in touch with like what the real people are saying. You know, what is yeah. what is a local station in, in Kansas City saying, yeah. not just what the talking heads on, you know, the big networks are saying. Well, so. and it's also like who you bring, you know, it's always like who you have around you, who you bring with you in anything that you do. Like I, I'm sure you have that with this show where, I, you know, when I um, decided to do, to do the FanDuel show, I knew, you know, you know what kind of, that you want. A, per, a person who maybe knows how you work so like i so recently not not too long ago um like my producer that i had my first like my researcher turned producer one of my best friends matthew hamilton came over from he was with me on good morning football for six years and came over and he's just like this like i couldn't do it without him i wouldn't want to like so smart such a football mind knows but knows how to like break it down knows how to make it like chewable for anyone like he he's someone that i'm in constant con like he's my best friend for the show like and he was like that on good morning football i'm talking like three in the morning i'm calling him saying like what do we make of this issue that happened or That's what do so we great. make of like what aaron Rodgers said and like it's a, a bounce back session and if if anything you just feel so much you feel so confident like like saying it or selling it or like he supports your facts like there's nobody out there like does it themselves right but like with my show, I want to obviously get my takes out there. I want them to be super supported. And so he's so good at that. So I just want to give him a shout out because like if any, if I ever do anything cool, like he's all over it. It's great to have people like that in your corner. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I know we've been going long here, but it's been such a fun convo. Okay. So, <laughs> I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> I know. Oh, I just appreciate I'm so you. Tired. For, I'm so tired, I, and and I've given you all these all this these answers. I didn't say anything crazy though, right? No. No, no. I just appreciate you just like hopping on with me and and just going long and keeping it super real. We didn't. Should I? Like, we don't, should I like want to be like you? Make me think. You're making me think because you're like, oh, we, you know, you're known, but you're not famous. Like, should I want that or no? <laughs> You no, know I don't think like, I don't think it's about like want. I think it's just like you are on a trajectory, right? And, and, I don't and it's know. like you who's, and I, who's famous? Like, what do you? Well, mean? I did McAfee. say that you were famous. I said no, 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 you're no, no. I don't. I'm not interested in that. McAfee is like you know what I'm saying. Like what? what yeah, am but I, even what McAfee is like not famous. Like, but give to me the many goal. People. Like, what's the like? What should be? You know what I'm saying? Like, wh- I have no idea. I think well, having I, a goal is a bad idea because you're going to disappoint yourself. You're going to like goals to me are not it right now. I'm not, I'm out on goals. I'm with it. And I actually think that's part of what like I've appreciated about this convo is to understand that like not everything is so damn uptight and strength. Like, yes, you can, you can be focused. You can have things you want to achieve, but it doesn't all have to be like, I think a lot of times people equate success with this like hyper vigilance. Yeah. And this like obsession that isn't necessarily the case. And that's what I've appreciated about this convo, just showing like, yo, you also I can... can't control it. That's what yeah. I would say. Like, Cause yeah. Cause so how many people, people are hyper vigilant and then never get what they were looking for. So I think, I think you have a great perspective that people can learn from. I <laughs> basically like don't have any expectations. <laughs> don't want, Hell yeah. don't want, don't want for yourself like just, just live your live every, like i don't well, know the I'm thing saying. is the thing is you're doing you may have a perspective like that but you're not being complacent you're not just like chilling and saying yep you know whatever i give up it's like a, a mixture of chilling and doing your thing yeah. um but also wanting something for yourself but what i was gonna say and we don't there's not really much to say about it but i just wanted to say like midwest gang like you went to whitney young like i grew up in chicago suburbs like i went to illinois i would go visit my friends at mizzou like we both 
we both really came out that Midwest, went to New York. Now we're in LA. Like, yeah, I, I just wanted to just represent for the parallels in our journey there. Just wanted to put it out there. Whether you're a Sox fan, Cubs fan, whatever <laughs> it is. What was the and, thing in Illinois? I used to go and get slop. Unofficial. Reckless. Unofficial? Unofficial. Unofficial. Was, and, uh, unofficial was yeah. pre, like, but like Facebook times, like not. Oh my I God. Mean, yeah. No, they actually canceled it by, by the time I was, um, they should have. I was like class of 10. And by, I remember freshman, sophomore year, it was just like the streets were green with chaos. And by the end it was like over. Um, so they might and it was still like Mardi Gras it. in St. Louis, which was like insanely reckless. Like the Midwest yeah. is nuts. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh we grew up and then we made it out to the coast and look at us now. But I still I want to spend more yeah. time back in Chicago. I love Chicago. Um, while we get out of here after this fantastic convo, the only thing that I would say <laughs> is um maybe you could leave us with like everyone loves to end and say like what's on the horizon for you, but I I really mean it in the sense of like where do you feel like you've come from? Like what, what have, what are the things that you've done that you're like, okay, look, all this stuff said, and I can, you know, have my little self deprecating humor and whatever, whatever, but like, (laughs) this is, this is what I've done and I'm proud of it. And it shows me like what I'm capable of. And this is where I'm going to take it to, you know, in in simplest terms. I think I, I think I used to care too much. Like I was so in my head obsessed with like, I was so insecure when I started in the industry. I was a lot hungrier though when I started, a lot hungrier. I was knocking on doors. I was. I was knocking on every freaking door. And I don't regret that, but I think I've just I don't know. It's I, I can't figure Is it okay to not know? Like I I watched some of these clips on like not just from your pop, but everyone's like got an answer. I don't have a freaking answer. Like I don't have an answer. I'm just in a in a mode right now where I'm like, let's just see what happens. I've sort of grown and I know that I know a couple of things. I know I'm a talented. So that's if you're saying say something, I know I have a lot of talent. I know I'm good. I'm good at my job. I know I'm good at it. I have talent. I know I can be better at what I do and all around. And I know that I don't have control over everything. So with those three things, I almost think I'm unstoppable in a weird way because it's just I'm taking things there's so much fun opportunity there are you kidding like what am I manifesting for myself I got a couple things in the works don't worry I got a couple things things uh going on but right now like I'm having it's it's really fun to launch a show and it's fun to try something uh a little bit different and it's fun to feel rewarded with relationships that you've made along the way and you could that you can like call it ask a DK Metcalf to come on the show last minute and he'll pop on or, or whatever that might be. Like I take stock in that, but I also, I want everybody to win. So I hope everybody just wants everybody to win. And that's the energy everybody I hope has that comes and visit this podcast after me. Absolutely. We definitely want you to win. Kay, thank you so much for stopping by keeping it super real with us. The people love you. Okay. Just accept it. Just embrace it. Okay. (laughs) We're all, we're all rooting for you and uh, definitely be keeping an eye out. Thanks, Ernest. I appreciate you guys. Keep killing it. Front Office Sports, killing the game. Hey, it's Abigail Gentra, host of The Lead Off, where Front Office Sports breaks down the biggest stories of the day, where sports influences business and culture. We give the latest details on topics ranging from college and pro sports to fitness and supplements. Tune into The Lead Off daily for continued updates on teams, leagues, and companies making power moves in the industry. Find the lead off on Apple, Spotify, and Front Office Sports. Hey everyone, this is Owen Poindexter, senior writer at Front Office Sports and host of The Newsroom. The Newsroom is where the Front Office Sports team of writers, reporters, and analysts break down what they're seeing in the sports economy and give their unfiltered takes on what's really going on behind the scenes. We're taking on the stories behind the stories on topics like the World Cup, live golf, major media deals, college sports, and every other major touch point where sports is impacting the rest of the world. Join the Newsroom every week for a look at the trends, power players, and scandals shaping the sports industry.
That's a wrap on another episode of My Other Passion. I want to thank Kay for coming out. She kept it super real with us. Definitely one of my favorite interviews we've done on the show so far. The year is winding down, uh, but we still got a couple more guests on the way. Appreciate everybody tuning in, showing love, showing support. Hit me up if you have any feedback, as always. And, you know, that was a long episode. I'll go ahead and let you get out of here. I'm going to do the same. Peace.